Team TRM Robotics. Hello everyone, Dylan TRM here, and welcome to my event recap for Texas Turkey Tussle 2022 for Scrapper S3, my 3 pound combat robot. I also made an event recap for Scrapper S1, my 1 pound combat robot. <laughs> yeah, I caught it there to be wicked. But yeah. Anyway, Scrapper S3 did not exactly have a very fun time, as the whole robot was plagued by mechanical issues for pretty much the whole event, which we'll go over more so as we continue down this recap. In terms of changes and upgrades between September Scuffle and uh, Texas Turkey Tussle, the main two were getting one, getting a new transmitter, because the previous one I had had a whole ton of issues with the arena last time, which meant Scrapper S3 was barely drivable. And two, upgrading to the main box wheels proper, as I didn't actually have enough weight to use them in the September scuffle, and so I was forced to use the old foam tires, which were way too slippery with the new drive in 4S battery I had upgraded to at that time. Aside from that, I mainly just left the robot as is. I had to, of course, carve some parts out here and remove some screws and bolts in order to save some weight, but yeah, I was ultimately able to save enough to use the main box wheels and new transmitter has actually been working like a dream. But of course, what we're almost interested in is the fights, of course. I mean, after all, why else would you be watching this, right? So the bracket structure for this was a little different than you might think. Because only three other robots showed up, not including Scrapper 3, of course, the format was changed to a sort of you fight everyone style, where you fought every other competitor one time, and no one who got the most points would be the champion. So then, my first draw was Cobra Chicken. <sighs> it just never gets any easier. If you're wondering why I'm dreading this, well, Cobra Chicken is a four-wheel drive Drisk spinner, with two Drisks on the front that hit like a freight train, and yeah, I'm fairly certain that he's done some upgrading. Last time, he managed to tear into the back end and do, well... See all those gaps there? Yeah, that was all from him. Yeah, he's proven to be upgraded from this time. From last time, sorry. So, I didn't really have much hope. The plan was just go weapon weapon with him and hope that, uh, I might do something. Unfortunately, as I said, the, my, the bot had been plagued by mechanical problems. The first one was the weapon pulley. The threads actually, the threads had actually sheared out of those whole, of the set screw mounts, so I... The set screw just did not want to fit in there and backed out way too easily. And well, you'll see what has that bad it out for me. Round one, match one for you. That's started. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. Turns out, though, I actually shouldn't have tapped out and, and should have just waited a little while longer because uh, in Cobra Chicken's very next match, he just died because his battery limiter circuit died on him. Son of a... <sighs> anyway, Grover Chicken actually got some seriously deep cuts in. Like, this is just solid UHMW all the way through here, and Cobra Chicken managed to cut it, like, halfway into it. This is like three, three quarters of an inch, after all. Yeah, I'm amazed at how much damage he managed to do to it. But yeah, starting off, starting off with 0 and 1. So then, on to the next match, then. The continuing story of Punkalo Bill. Yes, that is the actual robot name. Now, the continuing story of Bungalow Bill is a fingertech beater bar, just like Scrapper S3 here. However, it's actually a fair bit more short and compact compared to Scrapper S3, which is a little bit more spacious than it needs to be. The goal, he, the plan here was simply, again, just go head on with him and, and see what happened. If I won the exchanges, then just keep doing that. If not, well, just try to do my best to get through the sides and throw them in the air uh, as much as I could. Anyway, let's see how that strat played out for me. Okay. 
Why every time? Uh, couldn't tell. I'm actually very pissed off about that. And can you blame me? I would probably, quite possibly, would have actually managed to win the match had I not I centered myself more for like a moron. But oh well, negative IQ up here. Uh, anyway, this weapon pulley, the pulley set screw again, backed out after after a couple big hits. But what? Which I wasn't surprised by. What I was surprised by, though, was the right wheel deciding to just say "Hasta la vista" and popping clean off, which uh, which I was completely surprised by. I obviously didn't expect that, and well, and well, that certainly did not help against Bungalow against Bungalow Bill here. I'm not sure as to why it happened like this. What? That, sorry, I'm afraid that. I'm not actually sure as to why the set screws on this thing. Just gave out and just let the wheel slide on off. But all I know is I need to figure out what caused that and fix it. Because otherwise, that's going to be a pretty big problem. As for Bungalow Bill, well, I actually did uh, some pretty solid damage. In fact, if I show you this picture here, he, I almost knocked his whole motor right out of him. His we and all it held it in place was his wheel guard. Eh, that's when a uh, well, wheel guards mean I can get stuck on my sides. One of the nice things about them, I will admit, is I. If the, if the wheels start slipping back, then the wheel guards hold them in place. But alas, I had to save weight, so... Yeah. So at this point, I was feeling pretty defeated with Square Bros. 3. I was 0-2, had two very unfortunate losses, and at this point, I came to the decision that if Square Bros. 3 didn't pull out a win in its next match, it was getting, it was done. I was gonna quit three pounders for good. So yeah. Anyways, the last opponent for Scrap Bars Three was Blue Thunder, which again is another fellow finger tech beater bar. However, unlike Scrap Bars Three, where the whole chassis was hand was hand cut, he uses a pre made kit chassis instead. So well, that's neat, I guess. It also had a full set of teeth, which Scrap Bars Three does not. <laughs> one for one reason is of course for weight savings. 
well, actually, there's three reasons. One, one is of course for weight savings. The second is to maximize to improve the bite because because with this uh, setup, only one side of the teeth will come around per rotation instead of twice. And the third one is because one of the, this, I believe it's this hole here. The threads are just shot on it, so I can't actually insert a tooth in there if I tr no matter how hard I try. Anyway, blue thunder. Me, this was a make or break for Scrap Rest Three. If it loose, they lost this. Man, I was just going to trash it from and sell off everything. Uh, if not, and they actually won, well, I was going to continue trying with it. Anyway, let's see what the fight brought. Okay, here we go. Is your engine out? The motor's out? Oh. That was a tap out, man. No. Hold them. Oh, no, it's Oh, don't don't touch him. He can't move. This is broken. Don't move. He can't move it. He's trying right now. He can't move again. He's counting him out. Get away from him. Get away from him. He's done. <laughs> Get away from him. Dylan. He's cutting him out. <laughs> Bring it up here. Bring it up here. Okay, Yep. All right. Well then, maybe it was fate, or probably, or just dumb luck. Probably the latter, in honesty. Either way, Scrap Rest Three managed to pull out a win. Nice. So I guess I'm going to continue trying with it after all. <laughs> Either way, though. As you saw in the beginning of the match, I face planted in the wall, and well, that pulled the screw out of the pulley again, and well, I was down my weapon. However, I obviously opted to remove my forks since since Blue Thunder doesn't have any, so there's no need for them. Once I lost the weapon, I decided screw it, just go full tank mode and go throw myself into him until I until either I die or he dies. So whichever one happens first, and and I get stuck on the wall somehow. But, luck, but thankfully, unlike most times when I actually scratched, I think it's um, every single time. Is it? No, actually, no. Unlike most times when I get stuck, when I get high sided on the wall, I actually managed to back off with my, my torque and the wheels back and forth. 
And so, yeah, I just keep throwing myself at him, get to his side a couple of times and get some good pushes in. And, and eventually, I smack, I throw him, I slam him weapon first into the wall. And then I back off and, and off with the wheel again. Yeah, I still, I seriously don't know why that's, why that's happening with just, why it's only this wheel that's had the issue, but not this one. Not one time has this wheel managed to come off. And I don't know why. By the way, though, I'm down to one wheel. At that point, I start panicking. Because uh, cause this weapon's still going, I'm like, oh, fuck. Because if I'm like Bungalow Bill, who who actually had their his drive, whose drive was actually pretty dang beaten after after getting smacked by me several times, their weapon was still full throttle, and I had nothing to offer them. I, I panicked for a brief, and so I panicked for a brief moment, so I realized, wait a second, he's not moving. And then, and so I just backed off and did a victory spin, because I thought he was done. But then he starts moving again. So I go to him, he starts getting counted out, starts moving again, and that just those times. You saw it went off for a couple of seconds until eventually he finally died for good and just Well, got counted out. And Scrapper 3 gets to live another day. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure quite I'm not quite sure what killed Blue Thunder there. Mm, I mean they visually they had no damage at all because I couldn't hit them once. <laughs> but yeah. In terms of damage to Scrap Earth 3, well, there wasn't really much of anything that I could show you, really, just considering how hard it is to do much to any of this stuff. But, yeah, I got the victory. Scrap Earth 3 got, got itself a victory, and so gets to live another life. Another life? No, another day. <sighs> it's pretty late right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> However, just because Scrap Earth 3 gets to live another day, it doesn't mean he gets to keep living like this anymore. I've made a decision, and I'm retiring this frame once and for all. The plan is to make a whole new frame that's a lot shorter in terms of height, so that way that way I can save some weight and put it in uh, adding on the rest of the weapon teeth, as well as hopefully being able to keep using these Banebots wheels. They've proven to be very good and have not failed once in terms of, you know, disintegrating on an impact. They've actually survived very well and have proven so far have a fair bit more grip than the old foam tires. So I think I actually might want to stick with these. But yeah, as I was saying, I'm going to shrink, going to make... And I'm cut a new chassis with the height is a fair bit shorter. I'm also hope wanting to cut a recess in the, ch in the chassis here, so the fork, so the forks are actually recessed into the chassis instead of sticking out on the sides. I'm also want, and I'm also wanting to get the forks made made out of AR500 steel instead of titanium, as these titanium forks are proven to chip and bend, to chip and break way too easily. And, and believe me, these things. <laughs> Believe me, these things ain't cheap. One pair of these will set set some back like 20, 30 bucks. <coughs> so yeah, I definitely need to get some better ones. I'll throw my tire in this beater bar, which has actually been Scrap Earth Three's beater bar since since its debut. In fact, all the way back in May. <laughs> it's funny how it is, but yeah, this beater bar has seen just too much wear and tear, and it's time to get a new one. <laughs> but but yeah, Scrapper 3 is gonna get get a, get a redesign for next year. So look, so hope you all look forward to it as much as I am. Anyways, that's all for that's all I got for you folks. That's all for now.